She spent some time reading, curled into an armchair in the den with a fat science fiction book, part of a series, but often she found she had read the same paragraph over twice and still not to, not understood it. Her thoughts kept on returning to the evening. Would he come tonight? Finally, she gave up on reading and went down to the basement to throw some laundry in the washer. Then she dragged out the vacuum cleaner. Toward evening, she sat in the kitchen table with her notebook and pen, molding an idea into a poem. At the heart of night, watched for some lone boy, waiting in the pale moon's light, eyes forever changing ice to cold, stars, upon faded jeans, open, upon silver hair, black leather shines, half wild, still slightly mad, bewildered by time, chained to the night as he stalks, he might hear a sound shift into the moonbeam, and be gone. There was scratching at the back door. She blinked, put down her pen, and turned to face the door. The small windows reflected back, yet she could see a shadow outside. The key inside turned impossibly. The lock popped, and the door opened si silently, all by itself. Simon stepped from the night into her home. I only have to be invited once. You don't have to be quite so melodramatic, she snapped in relief. Looking abashed, he sat at the table and took the notebook from her. He read while she watched. I keep forgetting how beautiful he is, she thought with surprise. What if my father was here, she asked. I knew you were alone, he smiled at her, written words and touched her, her cheek with icicle fingers. I've waited centuries for you. For a moment she flirted with a picture of them fleeing hand in hand away from the plot problems of the world. Take the night, a tiny voice whispered, but she shrugged it off. Have you got an idea of what to do? She was dismayed to hear the tremble in her voice. She was hoping he hadn't. Simon laid the notebook on the table. I've got a plan. She caught sight of his other hand, the hand he hadn't touched her with. He held it under the table. She reached for it, and he tried to withhold it from her, but gave in reluctantly. It was burned. A nasty red welt lay across it. I stay out too long, he said simply. The sun, she asked. I was in a hurry to get safe inside. A sleep was coming on. I didn't secure the boards over the window. Well enough, and the sun must have come through a crack. The pain woke me. She made a sympathetic noise. He grinned. Yes, it hurts like hell, but it'll heal fast. But how does Christopher get away with pretending to be a ch real child if he can't go out in the daylight either? We can stand a few weak morning rays or a brief moment on a cloudy day. They think he's an albino. They, they bundle him up and keep him out of strong light to protect his delicate skin. He wouldn't like to, tr to try full sunlight though, Simon smirked, as if enjoying the thought. Albino, Zoe thought of the boy at the alley mouth again and shuddered. It was him. She grew angry. She couldn't let him threaten the life of another girl like Lorraine. Simon took his hand from her and picked up her pen. Can I use your book? She nodded. She felt firmer now that she decided. He turned to, clean, to a clean page and drew an octagon. This is the little structure in the park. The gazebo, she muttered, and he nodded. He drew an oblong on one side. This is the pit on the opposite side from your bench. I dug it last night, but surely someone would notice it today. I disguised it. Simon, what if someone fell in? No one walks around that way. Hardly anyone would be playing there in this weather. He seemed oblivious to the danger to innocence. It frightened her because it was ma it made him less human. Why a pit? There are stakes at the bottom. I want to lure him over them. They're very sharp. I think they'll do the, the, the job. Her stomach roiled. I always wondered why they worked. In the movies, I mean, when you're supposed to be vul invulnerable. We have to be pierced right through, he said, looking uncomfortable himself. Not just injured, impaled. It holds the unnatural body long enough for the soul to escape. The soul ha that's been trapped and kept in torment. The then there can be true death. She wondered at the self fishness of a body that could imprison its own soul. What could it do to someone who threatened it? What if he catches me? I'll be there, Zoe. I won't let anything happen to you. I'll be watching. He won't suspect you, so you can lead him. If it were me, he wouldn't follow so blindly. If he catches on, I'll be out there like a flash to distract him, get him to cross the patch of ground. But how will I get him to follow me? We'll pass by the house. I know the time he leaves. He has to wait for the family to sleep. He'll follow you beautiful and alone. I know it. 
When do we go? Not for a few hours yet. That's a long time. I have some things to tell you about the earth he needs about his, about his bear. Things he, that might help you. Anyway. His voice became soft and eager. I thought you might let me kiss you again. She glanced away nervously, her hands flying to her throat. No, he whispered. Just a kiss. A real kiss. While Zoe retrieved her coat from the banister, Simon stood at the front door, kicking at the frame. Stop that, she said. I'm nervous, too, you know. He looked as, up as if forcing himself to do so. There's a chance he might know about you, he said in a rush. He walked out. She ran out after him, her nerve ending screaming. What do you mean? He stood outside, bent hands shoved into his pockets. I'll understand if you don't go. She felt herself turning white. You weren't going to tell me, were you? No. What changed your mind? Your damn kisses. He shoved a piece of paper at her. She read the childlike prose, gradually becoming puzzled. But Simon, it says nothing about me. No, but he's a spiteful sort. It would be like him to think to me to let me think you're safe. He's paranoid, that's all, she thought. He's reading things into it. And he didn't tell me. He couldn't go ahead without telling me. After all, even if he is desperate. You've got to put faith in yourself sometimes, she said tenderly, despite the lump in her throat. The chance is greater than it was before, and I couldn't get more frightened. At midnight, she walked down the quiet street, dressed to lure. Simon was out there, she knew, watching her, keeping her safe. She had to believe he could keep her safe. Her, yet her palms were sweating and her mouth was dry. She had hung the crucifix Lorraine had given her around her neck, under the, her sweater. It made her feel better. No matter what Simon said, it didn't hurt to cover all bases. Her stockinged legs were cold, but she hugged her jacket around her and forced herself to walk slowly. She wanted to give him ample opportunity to spot her. So new when Crisper started to follow her, though she never heard him. The texture of the air changed. Perhaps the part of Simon left and her blood could sense it. She walked toward the park under a stargaze clear cold night, hardly daring to breathe. 